Thank you very much. I, I really appreci appreciate the invitation and, and you providing me an opportunity to, to, to discuss a topic that, that I deal with uh, at the hospital on almost daily basis. So ACL reconstruction and, and, and special emphasis on bioabsorbable interference screw. I'll start uh, sharing the screen and I would appreciate it if you let me know that uh, it has worked okay that you are able to see my presentation. Okay. Okay, so so uh, today's uh, this uh, today's uh, seminar is all about ACL uh, reconstruction. Here are my disclosures. Uh, I work as an, a medical advisor for insula, uh, Finnish insurance company Fennia. I haven't uh, had any contact with the Indian uh, previously, but uh, obviously I'm I'm today giving a lect lecture for them, and then I have. A grant uh, support for the research that is not related to ACL reconstruction or bioabsorbable screws from uh, various academic sources. So these are my disclosures. So basically th this will be the structure of, of today's presentation. We will talk about, we will talk first about the, the general uh, things of the ACLs like anatomy, incidence, injury mechanism, we, we will discuss a little bit uh, about the diagnostics and imaging and spend the majority part of the presentation on the treat treatment, then discuss a little bit about revision surgery and also the use of bioabsorbable screw in ACL reconstruction. So let's move on to the ACL anatomy. So anterior cruciate ligament is a ligament in the knee joint between tibia and femur. It's 32 millimeters long and has a thickness uh, between 10 and 11 uh, millimeters. It's a double bundle structure. It's extra synovial, but intracapsular uh, structure of the knee joint. And it receives, receives blood supply from arteria canicular uh, mediale. So it, it, it has a uh, very good uh, vascular supply, which we see as a hematron whenever the ACL is ruptured. So this is the, the picture of the ACL in the middle of the uh, knee in intracondylar space of the knee joint. So a little bit also, I'll talk about the uh, uh, neural things. Uh, ACL has mechanoreceptors that take part in providing knee proprioception. And the other aspect that you need to consider for ACL reconstruction is that the uh, strength of the native ACL is something like 2200 Newtons and the two uh, tendon grafts that we use to reconstruct the ACL, patella tendon and hamstring tendon, when we have it um, uh, four times, they are substantially stronger than the native ACL that uh, from the biomechanics point of view, both of these uh, grafts should work in ACL reconstruction surgery. So I already mentioned to you that the ACL anatomy is a double bundle structure. So we have two different bundles. When you do the uh, uh, dissection of the ACL, you can find anterior medial and posterior lateral bundles in the ACL. Anterior medial bundle provide, uh, is tied in the knee flexion and it's a stronger bundle of the, of the two bundle and it provides us anterior, posterior, directional stability. PL posterior lateral bundle is tight in the extension and it provides rotational stability on each joint. So this is basically, you can see the, 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 the bundles, anterior medial and posterior lateral and how they function in, in knee flexion and extension, providing the 
the scapulary for the knee joint. And sometimes in the MRI images, you can see uh, these bundles separately, but that's very rare to see them uh, that separately as in this picture. So the, then the other major part about the uh, ACL uh, uh, anatomy is that its attachment in the femur is very posterior. And this is a crucial point when we consider ACL reconstruction and then uh, it, it attaches to tibia and very anterior uh, in front of the PCL in the intercondylar uh, uh, space between the uh, medial and lat lateral uh, joint bearing uh, articular articular surfaces. So this is basically the ACL function. Anterior cruciate ligament limits anterolateral movement, but also internal rotation in tibia. And in knee extension, it also limits valgus and varus distortion in the knee joint that it, it provides additional uh, stability to both MCL and LCL ligaments. So now we move on to the clinical aspect, uh, part of my presentation. And the first topic we discuss is the incidence of the ACL rupture. So it's very common uh, incidence, uh, it, uh, 40 to 70 ACL ruptures uh, take place annually in a population of 100,000 people. It's the most common ligament injury of the knee joint. And it's the most common cause of hematron. So basically, if you would need to guess, you have hematron in the knee joint, there is a 75 to 85% probability that you have ACL rupture causing uh, blood in the knee joint. Patella luxation is obviously the second most common reason for hematron. So uh, great majority, something like 70% of the all ACL ruptures, they happen in sports. And the kind of striking thing is that most of these take place in the non-contact situation in sports. So when we look at the incidence, there are 200,000 ACL uh, uh, reconstructions performed in the USA annually. So these are the uh, risk uh, uh, factors for ACL rupture. Young age, athletic engagement, and engagement in, in sports that involve running, jumping, and uh, sudden change of direction. And those are football, floorball, basketball, ice, uh, and field hockey. This is the, then the injury mechanism, and, and, and very recently more light, ha, uh, light has been said on the how we get the ACL rupture. Uh, Francisco uh, de Avia, uh, he studied uh, from professional uh, soccer, where we have a TV footage from different direction, uh, 134 cases of uh, ACL uh, ruptures that were later uh, verified by MRI. And he, he identified the following pattern of uh, ACL uh, uh, body movement that exposes to, to ACL rupture. So it's usually non-contact situation where we, we plant uh, the foot on heel and uh, the foot itself is in the external rotation as here. Then we have either neutral or uh, valgus uh, alignment in the knee, hip is abducted, and then we have a, a contralateral rotation in the hip. And this is the, the, the most common movement that, that causes ACL rupture in sports without contact with other players. Then uh, the diagnostics uh, uh, about the ACL rupture. I already told that if you have hematron, it kind of suggests 
that you have acial rupture. But then the part of the, the, the uh, uh, is anamnesis and, and basically we are interested in the injury mechanism. There needs uh, to be an injury for ACL to rupture. Uh, ACL rupture is ne never degenerative uh, knee disorder. You always need to have a trauma. Then you are interested in the physical activity level of the patient, uh, their expectation, uh, what kind of knee they want and how fast they want to return back to sports. And then the most crucial one, if we are not uh, uh, doing the clinical examination immediately after the accident, is whether the main symptom of the knee is pain or instability of the knee joint. That's the most crucial thing you should always find out. We have three uh, very, very good clinical tests to diagnose uh, ACR rupture. We have Lachman test, uh, anterior drawer test, and then the, the pivot, pivot shift test. I like uh, uh, pivot shift and Lachman test, uh, uh, the, the most accurate ones. The fundamental problem with the pivot shift uh, test is that you can perform it only one time. And, and if it's representative, the patient most probably will not allow you to do it uh, for the second time. One thing to keep in mind that if you are doing the clinical examination right after the accident or trauma where you have the hematron, uh, usually the, the knee is so painful that the, the Lachman test or pivot shift, they become positive in two or three weeks. So you need to reevaluate the knee two or three weeks later to get the reliable reading how uh, much uh, instability you have in the knee joint. Then the, the most, uh, 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 the best diagnostic tool is obviously under the anesthesia uh, where there is no muscle activity. And then you get the best idea how unsta uh, unstable the, the knee joint truly is. Then concerning the, the diagnostic, the imaging MRI is the golden standard of the ACL diagnostics that, that you can see uh, the classical signs of the ACL rupture in MRI, but not in the X-rays. Okay, now we have the diagnosis and the next, the, 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 the biggest question that we face is that how we are going to treat ACL uh, uh, ruptures. And the big question is that should ACL uh, rupture be treated uh, surgically or can we treat them conservative uh, way without uh, doing any operation? So the, the, this question was uh, addressed best by uh, uh, a Swedish scientist who carried out a randomized clinical trial comparing uh, surgical treatment reconstruction to conservative treatment where no surgery was per performed on anterior cruciate ligament tears in athletes. So we can see here that the patients they had 120 patients, which they recruited to the study and uh, randomized to rehabilitation plus early ACL reconstruction or rehabilitation, and then option to have delayed ACL reconstruction in, in the case of symptoms persisting in the knee joint. You can see that the uh, knees in the in, in, in the group that had ACL reconstruction, the patient felt that these knees are stable and then the, the patients who are opted for conservative treatment, they, uh, their knees were unstable. Great. So uh, reconstructed knees are uh, more stable confirming the success of the surgery in this trial. But when we look at the symptoms and how they do in terms of function, we can see that uh, they, they do 
uh, uh, in similar fashion that there, there is no difference in, in, in functional outcome of the knee joint, whether it uh, uh, ha has had ACL reconstruction or not. And we can also uh, see that these patients that were, were allocated to conservative treatment, but then felt that their knee is uh, uh, unstable, that had surgery in, in delayed fashion, they also obtain the same functional level as the patients operated right after the accident. So you can see here that there is no difference in the uh, function of the knee joint, even though that, that people, people without surgery feel that the, the, uh, there is certain instability in the knee joint, you can see that the people have similar functional score in both uh, groups. Then the second thing was that, that these really scientists, they followed these patients for five, uh, five years. And then five years later in two, 2013, uh, they, they published the results of the five year follow-up and even at the five-year uh, follow-up, there was no difference in the function of the knee joint that the, the, the patients in both groups were able to, to have as active lifestyle and they uh, felt subjectively that they, they uh, knee were as good whether they were operated or not. And there was no, also no difference in the uh, progression of the osteoarthritis and no difference in, in number of the meniscal lesions, even though that the non-operated uh, non knees were, uh, uh, people felt that they were unstable, still there were no, no difference in the meniscal uh, development of uh, meniscal lesions in the five-year follow-up. So these studies, uh, this really study, the findings were confirmed two years ago. A similar study uh, was uh, performed in the Netherlands, Dutch ACL uh, study. This was a multi-center study. Uh, a study from Sweden had uh, 120 patients. The, uh, the Dutch study had 170 patients where uh, were similarly allocated to early ACL reconstruction after the uh, accident, and then uh, uh, to rehabilitation protocol, but with the option to have delayed ACL reconstruction if the patient were not satisfied with the outcome. And you can see that the outcome is the same as uh, in the study in the Sweden, that the, the knee function is similar in the, uh, in the knees that, that had, had ACL reconstruction immediately after uh, the ACL rupture or the ones that opted for rehabilitation and had the option to have delayed ACL reconstruction. Okay, if uh, both studies have exactly the same outcome. So if we, we wrap up these two uh, randomized controlled trials, uh, is that the, there is no difference in primary outcomes in young competitive athletes after ACL rupture between ACL reconstruction and conservative treatment. However, the, the, the key point that you need to understand is that 50% of the conservatively treated patients opted for delayed ACL reconstruction surgery because they felt that need, they need was uh, uh, functionally in, uh, unstable. So even though that they, they, uh, they were doing as well as with the ACR reconstruction, these patients felt functional instability and they opted for delayed ACR reconstruction. In both studies, it was 50% of the people in conservative treatment that wanted to have operation in uh, uh, delayed fashion. The second thing you need to know is that, that, that ACL deficient knees do not de develop 
more uh, subsequent knee injuries like uh, ruptures of the uh, knee meniscus and the osteo uh, progression of the osteoarthritis is similar in, in both treatment groups. So based on this, uh, there is no evidence-based arguments to recommend systemic surgical reconstruction to any patient who tore his or her ACL. Isolated ACL injury should be treated conservatively uh, right after the injury. And those patients that keep complaining on functional instability in the knee joint should be operated uh, later. And the expectation is that you need to operate something like half of your patients and half of the uh, uh, patients feel that the knee joint is stable without ACL. So then we need to also take into indication that, that we would have additional uh, uh, injuries that require surgery. And those cases, it is justified to perform ACL reconstruction immediately. If we have a complete rupture of the medial collateral ligament that needs to be uh, uh, treated operatively, then it is obviously uh, very logical to perform the ACL reconstruction within the same operation. If we have a buckle, buckle handle tear of the meniscus uh, that needs operation, uh, the patient has lacking symptoms, it's obviously uh, uh, mandatory to do the ACL reconstruction uh, with the meniscus surgery. Or if we have a, a cartilage lesion, osteocontrol uh, fracture, or something that needs to, to be uh, uh, operated, then we should also consider doing ACL simultaneously. However, what you need to do is that more surgery you perform on other structures. So if we look at uh, these randomized control trials, we see that more surgery we uh, uh, perform on the knee joint, on, on meniscus and osteocontrol lesion, the worse the outcome. So if uh, the, the meniscus is just a basic uh, a rupture, uh, not the bucket, hand, bucket, uh, bucket handle rupture, we could leave it on, uh, uh, not operated and most probably the, the outcome of the knee joint is better without the surgical uh, 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 treatment. So in general, the exercise therapy alone group has less symptoms than the patients that go through early re ACL reconstruction for the ACL rupture. So this is then the, the big question that, that orthopedic surgeons are asked is how ACL rupture influences the, the progression of osteoarthritis. And we know that about half of the patients with the ACL rupture develop, uh, develop severe osteoarthritis within 15 years after the trauma no matter whether they were operated or not. So the ACL reconstruction does not reduce the risk of developing osteoarthritis. Cartilage lesions are thought to, uh, are thought to arise from the trauma that causes ACL uh, rupture, not from the knee instability that might persist in the knee joint. So even though that you would operate right after the the uh, trauma, the ACL uh, rupture, and the knee would be most stable, there is still high probability that the patient will eventually develop osteoarthritis in that knee joint. Then I'll, I'll provide a little bit estimation about return to the sport after ACL reconstruction. So this is basically the situation. About 80% of the people return to any sport. Uh, about 65% of the patient return to same pre-injury level or, or uh, sport involvement they had before the ACL was ruptured. 
and about 55% return to competitive level sports. When we go to professional athletes, the situation is, is significantly better. It's over 80%. So what the, this tells us that it's all about the rehabilitation also, that if we, we have nine month rehabilitation, we need to take the psychological factors into the account. We should support the patient with the ACL uh, rupture throughout the ninth month rehabilitation period. We, we should take neuroplasticity issues uh, uh, into question. And we should build criteria-based rehabilitation program where we have a set uh, different criteria that the patient can advance to ne next level in the rehabilitation throughout the nine month rehabilitation period that, that it takes to recover from ACL reconstruction. And the most important one is that we need to engage the uh, patient uh, to sports specific training as soon as possible that they would be able to return back to competitive sports. I'll, I'll next talk a little bit about uh, ACL craft selection, how, how we should uh, select the, the craft for ACL reconstruction. Autocraft is the, the preferred choice for ACL reconstruction, especially in, in, the, in the young active patients. Allocrafts have substantially higher failure rates than autocrafts, and they are also more expensive. You should consider using allocrafts when you are doing multi ligament reconstruction of the knee joint. That's the indication for using allocrafts to, to re reconstruct some of the ligaments that were ruptured in, in the multi ligament in, uh, knee injury. Then the big question is that whether we are going to do the ACL reconstruction with either hamstring or bone tendon bone from patella, uh, middle of the, the patella tendon. That's the big question. So there are a large number of uh, endless list of, of studies that endorse use of hamstring autographs for ACL reconstruction. But there is a long list of studies also endorsing PDP craft for ACL reconstruction. Fundamental problem, and then there is a very long list of studies that haven't seen any difference between PDP and hamstring craft. Fundamental problem with all of these uh, studies is that it's a little bit like comparing uh, oranges to apples. So basically these uh, studies that I just showed, they, they are kind of registry-based studies that th there are multiple variables. And, and usually these are comparing different patient cohorts. So when we do real research, when we, we do a randomized clinical trial where we, we compare, in this case, quadriceps uh, to hamstring craft for ACR reconstruction. We don't see any uh, difference whether we use quadriceps or hamstring uh, uh, craft in the re, uh, knee reoperation rate, knee, knee stability, uh, subjective or objectively. Uh, and and so basically, this is the issue that when we uh, when the, the quality of the study is good enough, we usually do not see any difference. And then we try to draw uh, conclusions from the evidence that comes from different patient populations. So basically this is kind of summary of what we can conclude and, and propose. The functional outcome is the same, whether you have PTP or hamstring craft or ACL reconstruction. There, there is not significant difference in the uh, uh, in craft failure rates between those two crafts. There is some indications that PDP craft 
could be more stable than a hamstring uh, graft. But you should also take into account such issues as donor site morbid, uh, uh, morbidity. PDP graft, uh, patients with the PDP graft have more anterior knee pain, whereas the hamstring uh, 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 graft use leads to faster post-operative recovery, but, but deficit in the knee flexion strength that could be a crucial factor in sports that require uh, high-speed running like sprinting or football. So those are the things you should consider. So basically, my, my, my reference is always to do the, the primary operation with the hamstring craft uh, and use PDP for revision surgery. I, I use uh, hamstring uh, for, for, for patients that come from the jumping sports, uh, have a thin patella tendon, especially in females. And if they have had any previous bouts or symptoms of anterior knee pain or jumper's knee, I always prefer hamstring tendon. Then PDP tendon I uh, consider for football players, gymnastics, sprinters, and, and, and people involved in um, martial arts uh, sports. And usually hamstring is a, a, a primary surgery reconstruction, and I do revisions with the PDP craft. Then concerning the craft, you should always aim for a craft that has diameter at least eight millimeters, preferably, uh, preferably higher than that. Yet you want to go to nine or 10 millimeters. And, and the point is that, that, that uh, risk of revision is reduced by 14% whenever you can increase the diameter of the, the craft by 0.5 millimeters between uh, ACL crafts between eight and 10 millimeters. Craft diameters more than 10 millimeters should be avoided because these uh, patients have problems uh, regaining the uh, uh, full range of motion in the knee joint. Then the most crucial thing about the ACL reconstruction is a craft uh, uh, replacement, especially in the femur. So if football is a game of injuries, ACR reconstruction is a game of uh, millimeters that, that you have a, a proper craft pl placement in the knee joint. So basically the, the crucial thing is the, the femur. You need to obtain a, a craft a, a tunnel, a bone tunnel placement that is posterior enough to, to get uh, rotational stability. The TPL is much uh, easier because you usually have a little bit of ACL stump left on the TPL side. And, and basically you, you, you can use uh, the ACL stump as your landmark uh, to, to, to guide you to do the ACL reconstruction in the tibia. But the femur is a crucial uh, point. So uh, this is uh, the, the footprint of the ACL insertion. It's very posterior. You can see here that you, you need to, 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 to go posterior enough to, to get the stabil stability that the sports require in knee joint. So the thing that I, I, I most in, uh, always is that that I call this one a uh, black hole. You need to do deep right uh, uh, that you can identify the, the end of the posterior uh, surface of the lateral condyle of the, of the femur. And once you have identified the posterior surface by doing a deep right where you get the black hole here, you can uh, 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 identify the, the uh, optimal uh, uh, bony tunnel placement in the femur that, that you have a tiny wall 
uh, on the posterior side of the bone tunnel in the femur. And if you can do that, usually the, the outcome is, is, is very good in ACL reconstruction. A little bit about the uh, revision surgery. We have a failure rate uh, around 10 to 15% in ACL reconstructions. And you can see that whenever you go to the revision uh, surgery, the, the failure rate uh, increases even further. So but basically re revision is your last chance to up obtain a stable knee joint. So uh, these are the risk uh, factors for ACL reconstruction failure. If you had the craft that had the diameter less than 80 mill millimeters, more than 50% of the uh, ACL reconstruction failures are uh, caused by the craft uh, uh, tunnel malposition, uh, especially the, the femoral tunnel is the problematic one. Then young and old age also predispose, high physical activity level, high uh, uh, bone mass index, high posterior slope in the tibia, uh, meniscus ruptures, and poor rehabilitation for ACL reconstruction failures. Then the, 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 the next question that I'm going to address is that, is ACL reconstruction always enough for ACL rupture? And there, there are lots of uh, additional operation introduced to, to provide additional stability for the knee joint. The, the one we are most interested in is, is the anterior lateral ligament of the knee joint. So we have anterior lateral ligament of the knee joint that runs from a uh, uh, lateral epicondylus of the, uh, of the knee joint uh, to the lateral tibial plateau just underneath the, the uh, joint line in tibia. And there are lots of uh, doctors, uh, orthopedic surgeons who believe that ACL rupture and pivot chip uh, positivity, it indicates that your anterior lateral ligament was also uh, ruptured. So we consider uh, doing uh, anterolateral ligament reconstruction in revision surgery in always in re revisions when there is a, a pivot shift is really positive. There is rotational instability in the knee joint and there's no explanation for uh, uh, ACL reconstruction failure. We consider uh, doing also uh, AAL uh, reconstruction. Uh, we do it by modified Lemars procedure where we, we basically take the middle part of the tractus ilia tibialis, put it underneath LCL and attach it to the uh, lateral condyle of the femur. And we keep its uh, insertion in tibia intact so that, that we do the modified Lemars procedure to get additional stability to, to ACL reconstruction. And it seems to make the, uh, the difference that it makes the knee joint stable and improves the outcome. There is also one should also uh, uh, consider knee alignment if uh, before performing the revision surgery, especially the tibial slope when it's above uh, 12 degrees. Then I'm going to wrap up my uh, presentation today, discussing a little bit about the bioabsorbable screw uh, in ACL reconstruction. I, I, uh, the the bioabsorbable screws have some uh, structural benefits that that make them uh, very ideal for procedures that uh, involve uh, a bone. Uh, he, uh, regeneration healing. These uh, contemporary bioabsorbable screws have a strength, strength retention and degradation rate that 
uh, that are very ideal for orthopedic pro procedure and we get these uh, uh, benefits by using implants that are mixture of uh, mixture of different uh, polymers and, and by mixing these polymers we get the ideal bioabsorbable screws also for ACI reconstruction. Basically, the, the benefit of uh, using screws that are a mixture of the polymers is that the risk of the tissue reaction is very low to degradation of the crew. And, uh, and then the, the, the other thing is that when we uh, have, after the fracture of bony tunnel, when the, the bone starts to heal, we can retain the strength of the bioabsorbable screw until that, and then gradually, as the healing progresses, the screw loses its strength and, and, is, uh, and is converted back to bone. So I do all of my ACLs with the bioabsorbable screw. I consider metal screw for ACL revisions with the PDP, but I haven't had any issues with the, with, with, with the uh, uh, screw. So I usually try first by a absorbable screw, screw, which has worked for me without any problems. And the benefit for this bioabsorbable screw is that, that there is no need for secondary removal in the revision surgery. There is no imaging interference in the knee joint when you do uh, post, if you need to perform post-operative MRI. There is no uh, growth uh, restriction in teenage uh, uh, patients, no stress uh, shielding, no infection. And then the nice thing is that in, uh, implant is, uh, is replaced by natural tissue, eventually by bone. So, and the other benefit is that revisions are easy because you don't have to remove the screw, you can uh, drill through it and it's no issue for the knee joint. We personally use in Tumber University uh, Hospital uh, uh, bioabsorbable uh, interference uh, screw from Inion, Inion Hexalon uh, screw, which uh, converts to bone uh, in two years. We haven't had no uh, uh, screw uh, breakages during the insertion. So the, uh, this screw has excellent strength and I can recommend it. It's visible during the surgery. So it's very convenient to implant because you can see it in the arthroscopy. And then uh, I prefer bioabsorbable screws for sake of ACL revision that you can uh, drill through the screw and you don't need to re uh, uh, remove it. Uh, these are my take home messages of the presentation. Uh, ACL rupture can be uh, treated conservatively. Operative treatment should be reserved for young active patient population that complain functional instability of the knee, knee joint. ACL reconstruction does not uh, reduce the risk of developing osteoarthritis uh, later in the life and bioabsorbable interference screw is a reliable fixation device for ACL reconstruction. I thank you very much for your attention and opportunity to present today and I'm more than happy to address any question you might have for my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jarvinen, for the very uh, informative, interesting, and, and uh, comprehensive presentation for the ACL uh, uh, treatment, ACL uh, rupture treatment. So uh, we learned a lot uh, from you today again. So thank you for that. So I would have one, one question about uh, uh, for the future trends, uh, as you uh, mentioned, uh, uh, already there are like a surgical techniques available and then conservative technique. Uh, 
what do you think would be then in the future? Are there any new ideas or new things coming out uh, in a scientific uh, forum of ACL? Yeah, people are especially in the, in, in the middle Europe, they are doing repair of the ACL. What they do is that they do kind of suturing of the ACL right after the, the, the accident. Okay, all yeah. right. We haven't done that that much in Finland, but it's it's something that that we should consider in future that whether we could uh, do repair of the ACL in the acute phase right after the surgery. I think that this is related to to that there are hospitals in in large European ski resorts where basically you, you can do it like uh, trauma or emergency surgery. Well, within 24 hours and, and results are supposed to be good. So this could be a major trend in ACL surgery. I also believe that this uh, anterior lateral uh, ligament reconstruction, uh, the number of the cases, especially in revision surgery is going to increase within next few years. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that, that was also the answer to, to one of our questions that how do you see in the future bioservable uh, screws in ACL cases? Yeah, it's uh, these screws were invented in Finland. So uh, I might not be the most objective. Obviously, uh, the, the Finnish yeah. orthopedic surgeons were the first one uh, uh, to start using it. So I cannot tell how well, people in the other countries are educated. Uh, I'm very content with the bioobservable screw, especially in the ACL, that, that, uh, because it's replaced by natural bone, and then the revision surgery is very simple. So I would recommend converting more to bioabsorbable screws mm -hmm. from me metal screws. Okay, there is one uh, question. Uh... From Dr. Mohamed uh, uh, for the ACL uh, uh, reconstruction, uh, especially for the femoral side, he's asking about use of uh, uh, kind of loop uh, uh, devices button. Are you uh, using that kind of? Uh, uh, yeah, we, we haven't done that, but, but, but they are kind of like it, it, situation in Finland is the end of, uh, it's a little bit divided that. Uh, some university hospitals in Finland use exclusively endo button. Uh, we have a long experience with, with the bioabsorbable screws. So we use bioabsorbable screw here in, in Tampere. But, but I, I think that the field is kind of divided between endo mm -hmm. button and, and a bioabsorbable screw. We use endo button in cases if we have a blowout fracture. Uh, uh, on the posterior wall that, uh, yeah, we are also capable of doing the technology, but, but uh, we are uh, keen on using bioabsorbable screw for ACL reconstruction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mohammed asked also about the all inside techniques. Uh, what do you think about those? Yeah. The, the thing with the all inside technique is that, that learning curve is very long. I, I mean that it, it's a nice uh, technology, but I never went it to because the uh, people who have tried it have told me that the learning curve is, is quite long. Okay, if you can do it, but, 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 uh, but, but I decided not to go into it uh, uh, because even in the experienced hands, there seems to be a learning curve. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah I, I also uh, see that there are always, like with Indian products as well, uh, learning curve and, and require some. But uh, uh, then there are uh, one more question uh, about the uh, uh, use of the interference screws in uh, uh, TPL uh, ACL reconstruction in pediatric patients. Are there any specific uh, comments or uh, uh, risks for uh, uh, complications with- people? Yeah, yeah. We, we try to do uh, 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 
in pediatric population where we have open fuses uh, that, that the patient is still growing, we, we prefer a bioabsorbable screw that the uh, uh, growth potential on, on growth restriction would be avoided. But the, the most, uh, the, the biggest thing is the, the, the alignment of bony tunnels in the tibia. We aim for uh, 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 very uh, straight bony tunnel. And in the femur, we, we try to check it uh, uh, with the x-ray that, that we, we would be uh, under the, the open fuses in the femoral condyle. And then the other thing that, that, that the Finnish experience is that if you have a craft diameter of eight millimeters, there, there, should, there shouldn't be any interference with the, with, with the fuses so that, that we try to keep the ACL craft within eight millimeters in teenage patients. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Järvinen. Uh, it seems there is there are no more questions. Uh, uh, so uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Thank you. It was my pleasure, uh, and hope that 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 my my uh, presentation was informative.